Hey people, how are you doing? Nancy here and today we're going to talk about something so controversial. Okay, now look at these ingredients in front of you. What do they have in common? MSG, that's right. I'm going to tell you what the truth is based on science and science alone and also my perspectives as a scientist and a chef. So what's the truth about MSG? Now, if you look at all these ingredients, you have stuck fish, Parmesan cheese, seasoning cubes, tomatoes, some mushroom, shiitake mushrooms. You have soy sauce, oyster sauce, and some Worcestershire sauce. I always murder that word. But the thing is, you add all these things to your food to make your food taste delicious. And you're looking for a particular taste called umami, right? Umami is one of our five basic tastes you know we have sweet we have sour we have bitter we have but like this is very important for you to be able to enjoy food and msg is called monosodium glutamate and that just means that this is the sodium salt of glutamate which is a protein that is practically present in every single food in the world <laughs> okay so even if you don't eat msg your body is going to make it because it's actually a non-essential amino acid that is very important for our metabolism. So MSG got his, uh, the name from gluten. Gluten, which is a protein that we find in wheat that makes bread very stretchy. A scientist in Germany in 1908 actually discovered MSG by isolating it with sulfuric acid. And the most prominent of researchers ever was the Japanese scientist, also a chemist, known as Kikune. Now, Kikune discovered that seaweed was so delicious when he fermented it. And that's how he was able to isolate glutamate from seaweed, and he eventually named it umami. Now, he started the um, let's say industrial production of glutamate by fermenting certain foods. The same process that we use for things like, you know, uh, insulin that we inject people that have diabetes, um, vitamin C, that process, that industrial fermentation of natural foods, that's how MSG is being produced today. So how did MSG end up in this mess? Because, I mean, it's just natural foods, right? You know, you take natural foods, you ferment it with, you know, certain strains of bacteria, and then you add sodium to it to make it more stable. How did he get into this mess? <laughs> Let me tell you. So this doctor sent a letter, right, to the New England Journal of Medicine saying that, oh my gosh, he ate Chinese food and he started having headaches and palpitation and all sorts of symptoms. And now these symptoms are actually known as the Chinese restaurant syndrome, which is actually very strange because for 30 years, guys, 30 whole years, in fact, almost 40 years, there hasn't been any single study, not one, not one double-blinded study in human beings that actually um, proves that anything that he said was correct. What is the issue with the Chinese restaurant syndrome? It's the fact that it's racist. It is actually racist. As a scientist, I'll tell you that the only thing that matters is the evidence. Okay, so we know that smoking is bad because there's been studies, right? There's been double-blinded studies, studies done in a very wide population that actually shows that when you smoke, you're going to have higher risks of lung cancer, right? That's how we know that things are true. But in this case, there's absolutely not one study, all right? So that's, that's where the first problem is coming from. Now, I'll just give you a few facts about MSG. Now, the MSG that we consume in its natural state or, you know, artificially made MSG, made by fermentation, does not increase the glutamate levels in the blood, all right? There's a lot of talk about it being um, a neurotoxin, excited the nerve cells. It doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, all right? It doesn't increase the blood levels, and certainly it doesn't get into the brain for any reason, okay? The studies that actually people quote are done in rats and mice, and these mice were injected very high doses of MSG, levels that are above anything any human can possibly consume directly into their brain, into their skin, into their abdomen. It's, I mean, no human being is going to melt up some maybe seasoning cubes and then put it in a syringe and inject their brains. It has no meaning. It makes no sense. And these studies are so desperate just to prove that eating food from a certain people is wrong, is bad. I mean, how far can people go? 
Right, so when people say, oh my God, it's the artificial MSG I'm worried about. Well, the body doesn't recognize MSG <laughs> in its natural or artificial state. Once it enters the body, it is MSG. It doesn't matter what the sauce is, it absolutely doesn't matter. Once it hits the tongue, there's like an explosion of, oh my God, the sodium separates from the glutamate and then you feel the umami flavor of whatever it is you're eating. Yeah, and did you know that up to 95% of the glutamate that we consume is actually not even absorbed into the intestines, <laughs> right? That's so strange, 95% is not absorbed into the intestines. The body, the intestines just use it for, you know, they just produce amino acids with it, and they use it to produce energy. So, I mean, if you have up to 95% not even entering the, the, you know, being absorbed into the intestines, what's the issue? Right? We can actually consume up to 10 grams of MSG and it wouldn't show up in the blood because it has to cross the intestines first, all right? Which most of the time it doesn't because our bodies use them for, you know, amino acid production and energy production. So now I wish that people would actually, you know, take some time to go through research. I'm not talking about case studies or, you know, going on Google or looking for articles or going on PubMed, which is like the free um, place where you find just case studies on rats. I wish you could go through randomized controlled trials, meta-analysis, double-blinded studies of, you know, all the research that has been done on MSG. It is actually conclusive. There's no evidence. So, and as a scientist, it's actually very shameful when you come online and you see people that went to school, people that are doctors saying things like, oh my God, don't, uh, MSG is going to cause fibroids, it's going to cause autism, hypertension, obesity, and I'm like, oh, okay. Anything we say online especially has to be grounded in the evidence. And if there's no evidence, we have to be very careful what we say online because now a lot of people are scared um, without even having any personal issues with MSG, I would not take for granted the fact that people have actually recorded some um, symptoms from using MSG. You're not going to take that for granted. But according to research, which is what guides every single thing we do as scientists, there's absolutely no evidence. So now I'm thinking if we can have up to three grams of MSG, do you know what three grams of MSG looks like? It's a whole cup of soy sauce. If a human being can drink a whole cup of soy sauce and still have no symptoms, according to research, what is the issue with MSG in Nigeria? Why, why, are, we, um, why are we so you know, particular about getting people to stop it as scientists? If you're going to go ahead and stop MSG, what can you do? I'm a chef, I'm mostly professional chefs trying to say, oh, I can cook a delicious meal without umami, without adding any MSG whatsoever. And then you see people who make spices, for example, out of mushrooms saying, oh, our spices are MSG free. And then they add dehydrated tomatoes and carrots and go, oh, MSG free spices. I'm like, no, there is MSG in those, in those things. And if you are going to um, throw away people's culture, you should at least teach them how to flavor their foods um, naturally so that they get all the benefits from eating. So telling people to quit MSG, I mean, makes no sense to me. Without actually giving them um, alternative uses or alternative ways to get umami or to achieve the umami flavor that they have grown up loving and understanding. I mean, if you go to Japan, for example, you have hours and hours and hours and MSG. And these guys are living to 90 years. So what is the issue? What exactly is the problem? Um, we see that there's a subtle racist undertone with the whole narrative of MSG being wrong. And that is something that we need to address as Africans because it's, it's seeping into our society. Um, that is not to say that people should be overly dependent on MSG. Um, the goal is to be able to educate people on how they can utilize their local spices, local herbs, to make their meals taste amazing without being overly dependent on just seasoning cubes. So I'll say we need to embrace things that our ancestors discovered, things like iru, uh, local nutmegs, uh, local spices, uh, ginger, garlic, turmeric, black pepper, 
Uziza, you know, things like that. We need to focus more on using those in our cooking. It's very important that you know that the issue with MSG is not really, for me, it's not really MSG. It's not really glutamate. It's, it's the sodium. In a gram of MSG, you have 120 milligrams of sodium. Um, although that, compared to 390 milligrams in um, a gram of salt, that's low. But people overuse it. Like, people use it way too much. You just need a little bit of MSG um, to get the umami flavor that you're looking for. You don't need to, like, overdo it, like how people put, like, up to five cubes of Maggi <laughs> in their meals, for example. You're like, okay. I noticed that in Nigeria now, people that are trying to stay off MSG are eventually taking way too much sea salt. I mean, I tasted meals that are MSG free and then the sodium, oh my gosh, the sodium in those meals are out of this world. Some people become healthy. I mean, they, they start to eat more fruits and vegetables and, you know, they start to eat more salads and they start to see improvement. And they say, oh, it's because I stopped eating MSG. That's why uh, my migraine stopped or that's why something else stopped. No, it's because you decided to exercise. You decided to eat more healthy. Um, because all the symptoms that you actually attribute to MSG are scientifically proven not to cause any of the symptoms in the first place. All right? So the next time somebody says, oh, MSG is wrong, you ask them to quote the human studies, and they must. <laughs> they have to. And especially the foreign Nigerian chefs who, who want to be like the American... Um, counterpart so bad. The next time you speak bad about MSG, make sure that you have found, you finally found a study or a group of studies, meta-analysis, or you found evidence that is actually not safe. Because all the organizations, talking about the FDA, the WHO, all the organizations that are actually in charge of our health have told us that this is safe, right? And on a personal note, I would say just try and reduce your over-dependence on it because Nigeria is blessed. We have a lot of herbs, our local spices, our local um, meals, and we are too blessed to be dependent on this. At the same time, there's no need to demonize anybody who is cooking with this. Just try and tell them as a health professional to reduce their intake of sodium, which is the most important thing that I'm worried about because, I mean, that's where the research mostly lies. The fact that excess sodium is wrong, tell them to reduce their intake of that instead of just demonizing seasoning cubes for no reason. All right? Enjoy your life. Eat well. Eat your veggies. Sleep well. Exercise. And before you demonize anything, as a, especially as a scientist, make sure that you have done your due diligence. Make sure that you have researched and you have gone through all that there is to go through about a certain topic. Okay? It's very important. See you guys in the next video. Come on, it's...